Okay, um, hello everybody, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between while and for. Uh, when to use while and when to use for loops in our programming in Java. So first of all, we have to understand that a controlled loop can be using a while instruction or a for instruction. These two are loops, okay, and then and they can be used as you like. Now the while loop will have some parameters inside these parentheses. Now those parameters are just a simple statement. It can be like i equal to 6. If i is equal to 6, then develop whatever is needed in the keys. Now if i is greater or equal than 6, then develop these. Or even if i is not a number or an integer number, but it's a string, you can make it i dot equals to something inside quotation marks. So if this is exactly the same as the string inside i, you will have you will develop everything inside the keys. You will you do have to understand that in order to change the condition inside the parameters or inside the parentheses, you need to modify the variable i inside the keys. You can either you can either increase or decrease the 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 variable i and that way you can control when it will exit the loop. For other cases we have the for. Now the for is also a controlled loop. In this case we have also parameters inside the parentheses but we have three different parameters. The first one is the start point. Where do you want to start uh, the iterations? The end point and the counter. Now the start point can be the creation or the instantiation of a variable in i equal to zero. So you can say it starts in zero. You can start in, a, in another variable or you can start at a number. Okay, at a different number. The endpoint is where you want to get. Like, what is the the last number or the last process that he is going to develop? In this case, the same variable i will be less or equal than a variable. It can be greater or equal or or equal to a variable. It can be greater or less than a value if you know exactly what the value is. Sometimes, depending on user input, you will have you will have different variables. So it's so you won't have um, you won't have a constant value. You will have a variable in the case of user inputs. And of course, the counter will tell me how is this variable decreased or increased in each iteration. Okay, so in this case I can increase by 1, the variable, I can decrease by 1, I can increase by 2, so by 2, or decrease by 2, or I can make it um, uh, change in any way. Different from while, the counter is inside the parameters. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that you should never use the variables that are inside the parameters and modify them inside the key of the true statement. So in case that the for meets these requirements, the variables used here shouldn't be modified because in some cases you can have an infinite loop. If you modify a variable inside the keys, if you modify the variables inside the keys you might get um, an infinite loop. Okay? So that would be the difference between for and while. Now an example of for would be starting in 0 up to 7 and increase by 1 develop this code. Here I have the three different parameters start point, end point, and counter. So let's see some examples of these um, 
of these two controlled loops. First of all, we're going to look at how to make a program that outputs the even numbers between 0 and 10. So, we're going to create the public class even numbers and, of course, I am going to use the while controlled first, the while, uh, the while controlled loop. I create an integer value or an integer variable in zero and I say that while i is less or equal than 10 he will develop this code over here. So depending on this condition I will develop this code. Now I need to output all the even numbers. Okay? So I'm starting i is in 0 and he is going to iterate up to 10. But the question is, if I need even numbers, the division of each number by 2 will not have a remainder. So I will use this expression in order to get that result. So if i divided by 2, the remainder is 0, then I will input or print, I will print that number. Then I will increase the variable and see if it works with the next number. So I close my while statement, I close my public static void, and I close the public class. When I run the program, I get 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Okay? In 0, he entered, because 0 divided by 0 doesn't have a remainder, it's actually, it's actually uh, indetermined, and it will show the first one, because he entered the if, right? But it's an even number. Then he goes to 1, 1 divided by 2, um, it doesn't work, so he won't print 1. Then he increases to 2, 2 is less or equal than 10, so he will enter the while and ask if 2 divided by 2 has a remainder. Since it doesn't, it will print out the number 2, and so on until i is greater than 10. Now for our next example, we, we need the output to output the odd numbers backwards between 0 and 10. Now let's think a little bit on how to modify this code to get the odd numbers but backwards. In this case, i shouldn't start in 0, it should start in 10 and lower down to 0. And in this case, while i is greater or equal than 0, then it should develop this. So I changed a little bit how this works in order to get the odd numbers. Now, in this case, if i th doesn't have a remainder, then it shouldn't apply the, the condition. We should make it the other way. If i divided 2 does have a remainder, then print i. And instead of increasing that variable, I will decrease the variable so I can get all the way to 0. We didn't have to modify um, a lot of things from this code in order to get our results. We just started at a different value, the start point changes, then the end point changed in the while loop, and of course the condition of the, of the if statement. So when I run the program, I will get 97531. So I printed 
the odd numbers backwards. Okay, now going back to our first example, I'll put the even numbers between 0 and 10. Let's do it with a for statement. In this case, I will create or instantiate the variable inside that parameters. Remember that the for has three parameters. The start point, so I'm going to start in i equals 0, go all the way to i less or equal than 10, and I will increase that variable i by 1. In this case, I will not, I won't have to increase the variable inside what it's doing. So I start in 0, and I have the same condition if it's an even number. Okay? So the difference is that now I have all the parameters inside the parentheses. If I run this program, I will get 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 because they are the, um, the even numbers. Now if I want to use the for statement for our second example, I'll put the odd numbers backwards between 0 and 10. I would have to change the parameters inside the parentheses. Now i won't start in 0, now it will start in 10. And what is the end point? The end point is if it's i, it's greater or equal than 0, because I'm going to go backwards from 10 to 0, and the counter will decrease. In this case, I will ask for the condition of the if statement to have a remainder, and if it has a remainder, it will, in, it will print out the variable i. So it's very simple. The two programs can be developed with a while or a for statement, just with a couple of um, differences. Now I run the program, and I will have also the output wanted. So it really depends on the programmer, and it does have some differences.